Well, good day everyone. So we're starting off a new uh, playthrough uh, after my last one. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, here's the new story that I uh, kind of, you know. So uh, for now, uh, I'm just only saying that this is more like the introduction or backstory or world building or whatever you call it on uh, the new playthrough that I've been starting so uh, the name of it is basically the Black Star Initiative this is basically a UNE program or United Nations of Earth program so uh, its main introduction is that on the brink of total annihilation and extinction the United Nations of Earth turned to the last option humanity had the Black Star Initiative the best of mankind boarding a space arc sent on a far away galaxy. Its main goal is to overcome the endless void and find a new planet that will be the haven for mankind and all what we have done. Uh, this is all what we have and there is no plan B for humanity. <coughs> so the thing here is this. Uh, the Let's say humanity has uh, achieved space travel when they discovered uh, galactic uh, gateway uh, inside the uh, soul system so it helped them uh, space travel however uh, during the course of the space travel or early I'm not sure if early uh, I'm still working out with the story or early colonization colonization or space interstellar travel they came across an intelligent uh, species which is the uh, uh, what do you call this uh, you know uh, the intelligent species or something like that or aliens whatever you call it and the first contact was ended in a disaster and now uh, humanity is on the verge of defeat and extinction and it's only possible that within I don't know a few months or years the alien species would be entering the uh, you know uh, uh, the soul system so the United Nations fearing defeat and extinction of mankind, uh, they have two black projects when they, um, or two uh, projects when they uh, first discovered the, ga the uh, galactic gateway in the, inside the solar system. So uh, two of these projects is the Black Star Initiative and the White Star Initiative. Now the White Star Initiative starts off as uh, the activation of this uh, galactic, uh, you know, galactic uh, gateway and the second is the black star initiative which is basically the colonization uh, efforts now I I'm still writing up uh, the background story but the main idea here the main gist of here is that the galactic doorstep or galactic gateway leads to um, you know uh, more like a portal to another galaxy basically an elliptical galaxy so uh, yeah, um, anyway, I'll, uh, for now, this is the introduction that I could say is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of desperation, uh, the humanity has sent um, a convoy of colonization ships uh, within months of uh, before uh, or within months of the feared uh, invasion of uh, sol the solar system. They activated this one, the galactic or the, the White Star Initiative uh, made a good effort in activating this uh, gateway. I'm sorry if I'm uh, having, uh, you know, problems with my uh, speech because uh, I'm not a native English speaker. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm still struggling with words on how to express it. So anyway, the, the White Star Initiative achieved a success of activating the galactic uh, gateway. Which, of course, uh, after the activation of it, um, the Black Star Initiative uh, started its efforts in transversing the void from the Milky Way galaxy to this uh, unknown elliptical galaxy. So, uh, upon transit of the uh, Black Star Initiative to this uh, unknown galaxy, unknown elliptical galaxy, the galactic gateway that is connected on the solar system suddenly went offline and before it went offline the black the uh, convoy of colony ships that were being uh, commanded on the black star initiative heard some nuclear detonations on the other side of the galaxy indicating either that suspicion that the invasion of the solar system has begun by this uh, 
uh, swarm like uh, alien species. So uh, there. Now uh, on the other side, on this uh, newly elliptical galaxy, uh, the Black Star Initiative have uh, already. Uh, uh, oh. Oh damn it! Uh, okay, <laughs> I made a mistake. Just give me a second here. Okay, my apologies on that. I accidentally pressed the, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the play button. So anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, uh, about the Black Star Initiative. On the other side, uh, it left the Black Star Initiative marooned on this uh, elliptical galaxy and with no way to go back to Earth, or at least, uh, or no way without communication back to Earth. Now, um, of course, uh, they found a trainer system, uh, which is uh, which their convoy of colony ships landed. Uh, they found on that trainer system that there is a single uh, habitable planet that is uh, quite astonishingly very similar to Earth. And uh, the convoy of uh, colony ships landed in this planet. Now, strikingly, uh, just as a background, uh, nobody, uh, humanity doesn't know who or what built this uh, gateway. But they can only assume that the, the builders of this uh, gateway could only assume that, they, that the aliens, the ones who built it, of course, are capable of galactic travel, so from one galaxy to another. So, uh, yeah, like similar to Stargate, but only on a bigger scale. <coughs> and on the size that you can fit an entire colony ship. Anyway, so they've uh, already hired, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, and now, uh, they've already uh, landed on this planet and they built their civilization, uh, which of course they named Sanctuary. Now, of course, the main goal of the Black Star Initiative is the colonization and prevention of extinction of um, the human race from, uh, yeah, the prevention. Uh, the colonization of extragalactic uh, planets and at the same time uh, prevent the extinction of the human race. So yeah, so they landed on a continental world and uh, yeah, and they named it Sanctuary and they built their civilization there um, uh, for quite some time uh, and tried to settle. So uh, initially, the Black Star Initiative might have might is uh, thinking that the Earth had fallen to this, uh, you know, to this uh, alien menace. So uh, the Black Star Initiative now is all alone in this uh, sanctuary, and it's up to them or in their program to well uh, unite man, uh, not exactly unite, but make sure that the survivability of the human race. Now here's the thing, uh, here's the, uh, you know, general, uh, uh, what do you call this, profile of the Black Star Initiative. Of course, uh, since it is a United Nations program, it is democratic, just like in the real world, uh, United Nations are very democratic. And they're a military commissariat because, well, uh, in the sense that uh, it is headed, uh, well, the program is under military leadership. So, so this colonization program is under the military rule because, uh, of course, during that time, uh, well, the solar system is, of course, during wartime against uh, the alien first contact, during the first contact war. So, uh, currently, or during that time, the uh, humanity was under wartime rules. So, uh, it's a military commissariat, but the head of their gov uh, government, uh, or uh, actually, it's not exactly a government. This is more like a United Nations program. Uh, the head of it is uh, Paulina Sanchez, which has the title of director. Now, they do have these traits. One, of course, since they're democratic, they have the parliamentary system, similar to the European Union or some uh, you know, other governments in Europe. And reanimators, because uh, since they are more like a, a, you know, a science, uh, you know, pet science project of the United Nations, they have this uh, special unit, which uh, from the name itself, uh, reanimators, they basically reanimate the dead, uh, specifically humans. Now, it's not exactly, just to give uh, an extra detail, reanimators, uh, from my point of view, or in this lore that we're starting, is that... Uh, the uh, reanimators here is not exactly a zombie soldiers. They're more like similar to, uh, you know, uh, the Universal Soldier. You know, Van Damme, uh, where the, the movie where Van Damme styles, yes. 
uh, the reanimators looks more like in reality or in science based looks more like the universal soldier they're basically dead and they were just reanimated but their consciousness is still a question if whether they are alive or not the only thing they knew is that uh, these soldiers are being recycled to fight again now when it comes to government ethics they're xenophobic because yes uh, they are uh, currently under alien invasion so they're not very happy to see aliens around the second is that they're military is because from the name itself this is a military uh, under military jurisdiction project so it's a United Nations uh, you know uh, science project and materialist because well uh, everybody's uh, high-tech nowadays so uh, yeah so there we go so anyway uh, so uh, that's what uh, we're going to start our uh, role play right now so I probably have to uh, add a few more details on that after uh, my playthrough here uh, I'll probably make a, if, if possible I probably have to make a video or something uh, you know a similar story uh, I mean not exactly a story about this one so for now, this is entirely free, uh, free uh, interactive type of story. So uh, the story will probably be because the, uh, based on the game events itself. So uh, we're gonna start this. This is, will be the galaxy size, uh, 800. Yeah, I'm okay with that. We're gonna keep it small uh, because I don't want my computer to lag uh, like on my previous playthrough. So we're just gonna keep it as random, but uh, we're going around. Uh, yeah, this about uh, I guess this is enough 7 to 15. Yeah, we're okay with this number So advanced AI starts it's either one or three empires. We keep it random uh, Fallen empires. We're gonna keep it max one other empires. We're gonna keep this one max tradition cost is uh, Okay, I'm okay with this one um, Habitable worlds will be we'll just keep it one or something I don't know, maybe 1.5. Yeah, I think 1.5 is okay. Uh, we're not gonna. Now, primitive civilizations, uh, we're gonna be small because here's the story lore. Uh, the story lore says that the galaxy that they were, you know, traveling with, it is uh, earlier believed that this elliptical galaxy is uninhabited and more like a safe and sanctuary for, you know, for the human race against the. Uh, you know the alien invasions so initially believed that the elliptical galaxy is uh, you know uh, initially it is believed that the galaxy is uninhabited and do not have any alien life or at all so crisis anyway going through um, crisis strength will max it up to 25 because uh, I don't want my ga gameplay to be very uninteresting so uh, and I still have issues with the AI being dumb or something Crisis time will keep it all. Uh, now, mid game year. Um, well, actually, mid game crisis is. Oh, it's already sent to 50 years. So we're gonna put it out to 2035 and this one 2350. Yeah, that's okay. Victory year, we're gonna keep it off. So uh, <coughs> it's a. Uh, uh, like I said before, uh, we don't want any timelines as long as we, uh, you know, solve all the or defeated the or all types of crisis. We're okay. Now difficulty. Uh, I'm already on Commodore, but the thing here is that the AI isn't exactly. Uh, it's difficult not in the sense that the AI is very good. It's difficult because the AI cheats a lot, and I'm, I'm really, really gets down to my nerves that the AI always cheats during, uh, you know during my gameplay and I didn't like it because it's well in some extent it's not fair um, I don't know I just don't like the AI cheating uh, which you know it's not uh, well anyway I think any strategy player would really hate it if their opponent is cheating even if it's a computer so uh, what's this a slight bonuses to its economy research and naval capacity mm, I don't know I'll go for uh, NC. There is no, yeah, just keep it. Um, yeah, there is no inherent economic scientific advantages over the Yeah, let's keep it fair and square. I don't want it, uh, you know, I don't want my computer to be cheating all the time. If they lack good, if they lack the minerals, then they lack the minerals. They have to work for to get the minerals. Unlike on my previous gameplay, you're starting to wonder how the AI gets its resources. 
uh, AI receives full difficulty setting immediately at the start of the game. No, we, uh, it has to be gradual, so we'll keep it off. Um, what's this? Uh, difficulty adjusted modifiers. Well, I'm not sure what this one means. Empire wide economic modifiers are multiplied by difficulty f uh, bonus for AI pairs. This makes the game AI significantly stronger. For example, technology which gives 20 mining once they give up on, on Grand Admiral. Oh. Well, we could let it have a little challenge, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll just keep it off. Uh, I, I really hate it when the. Uh, let's keep it fair for the player, for me. Uh, I don't want the uh, computers cheating. I really hated that. Empire placements, we'll keep it random. Uh, random neighbors off. Hyperlane density, we're okay. Uh, worm hole pairs, uh, we'll probably keep it 0.5. Very rare, because even in nature, it's uh, wormholes are very near. Uh, rare, guaranteed habitable worlds. Uh, I don't know. Uh, habitable worlds, we'll keep it 1.5. We'll just keep this one 1.5 or something. Uh, we don't want, you know, to over uh, stretch our. Uh, you know, uh, overstretch our worlds here. I have problems managing. Uh. So L Gates, it's either off because I don't want the computer doing a surprise move against me. Uh, after all, this isn't the Milky. Uh, this isn't the galaxy. Uh, this isn't the uh, Milky Way galaxy. So we'll just keep it off and. Uh, Xeno compatibility off. I don't want to let my game lag. So for this one, we'll just keep it in the middle. So uh, just to balance it up. So I guess this is a good. Uh, yeah, uh, Hyperlino. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep it. Right. Okay, so there we go. Uh, let's start this one. I'm not connected to internet, so we'll just, uh, you know, uh, put it off. So there we go. I guess this will be the introduction of my. Uh, gameplay uh, for this uh, playthrough so hopefully everything will uh, start fine and uh, I expect that the computer will not cheat obvious or at least will not cheat very obviously on this playthrough so I'll work out the details on the uh, on the lore of this uh, gameplay so for now this is uh, I'm just uh, recording this one for the settings just in case some so in case I forgot what kind of settings so I just some yeah, uh, just so I could just back through it or uh, take a look back. So this is, uh, one more time, this is the settings that I made up. I want it to be a very short game. Uh, a short and entertaining game, not the long, you know, long game that I uh, played. Uh, so anyway, uh, okay, 2250. Yeah, we'll just keep it around 2350, I guess. Both of it. But it's going to be 50 years earlier. So there we go. Uh, now, this, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, it doesn't mean that 2050 it will exactly start in 2350. Uh, this is the earliest date a mid-game crisis will happen. Same goes with this one. So uh, I'm gonna go for uh, 50 years earlier. So uh, yeah, okay. So uh, I guess that will be uh, our uh, introduction for now, and let's play the games. So. Uh, so this is Snail uh, signing off on our uh, gameplay, so bye bye for now.